Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's an LCR Data Bridge 401 by AIM Instruments LTD in England. And look, I was able to wash it nice and shiny. There was just some problems with some of those plastic types when you put on labels the glue in the label somehow i don't know it affects the the coloring look at that it's just terrible and this reminds me again about my constant complaint about people putting stickers on the front of units so remember to tell all your friends to put stickers on the back or sides or somewhere else. Because this is so, so annoying. So this unit is, I don't know exactly how old it is, but I will think the end of the 80s. We're going to get back to that and see how, how good I am at guessing. It can do um, two different frequencies. It's only... Um, 1 kilohertz or 100 hertz the previous owner they were really nice and friendly to print out something from the manual here about recommended measurement conditions and this is very useful for every day's uh, work to set up the frequency and the parallel or serial mode i think this is the the way that the resonant circuit in here works so you somehow need to um to change that and then you have of course um resistors and it's not auto all of these things so you need to do a little bit of uh, clicking around here and i haven't yet understood how this biasing uh, work uh, but we will um, try and play a little bit with that it's it's quite big as you can see it's uh, 44 centimeters wide and i was told this one should work so how about we just plug it in and play and this is something that is a little bit funny about those uh, IEC mains connectors. I think you can have those connectors here where the cable go this way or that way because you can see this looks like something is wrong here, right? Or maybe somebody flipped this uh, connector so that the pin is up. I would, I would have wanted the pin to go down. I mean, but it's quite a simple fix, isn't it? Yeah, just some screws and we can fix this probably. Because, I mean, this is better, isn't it? And then it goes into capacitors. So what have we got here? Let's turn off the light a little bit. Yeah, this display is a, oops, a little bit dim. So what if we just stick in a capacitor? Oh, I kind of like this, by the way. When you push this one, see? It releases the contacts. And this is like really, really strong spring. I think there is a little bit of a loose connection because I just turned it on again with my little test capacitor here. And this one should be... 983 well, I think it's very very close to that but if I push and then it go back okay now it's working that was funny let's try and repeat what I just did turn it off and then look at that now it's not connected now it's in microfarads and see this LC is lit Oh, and then it's, and then it, okay, so it's in so, some sort of an auto range of, okay, so it was just a matter of waiting a little bit, and then it will be perfectly fine. Before I just push this, and then it went straight to the right value. So, we can try and play a little bit with the, this is one micro, so it's in the middle of everything here. So, I would expect all of these different modes to give more or less the same result and exactly what it is see serial or parallel there is no difference one kilohertz or 100 hertz is almost the same 
result of course. So here's the fun thing. Let's try and measure the Q factor. Then it's just overloaded. Okay, let's go back again. So now let's try bias. And then it just says bias. And then and then what? It's not reading anything and there's no way I can go out of bias into capacitors. No. I have no luck getting back. I tried this a few times, so I don't know what is happening. So this is something we should not activate because we don't know how to get out again. Weird. Well, well, let's try and get inside and see what's inside this fantastic unit. So let's look a little bit inside. So this is the display and all the push buttons. So there's a little latch circuit here in the serial input via this flat cable here that's driving all those things here on the display. And the main board is one large board. Of course it contains a Z80 ZPU from 1983. Oi, look at that. Look at the layout. Lines aren't even parallel, so that re reels the layout technique. And also here, it's just tape on transparent film. You can see clearly what I'm talking about here with all the tracks just don't like that it's not a bad design style by the way imagine a time before cat you needed to do it like that and we got the classic regulators for the different power supplies we got an analog section doing the actual measurements and then Probably some different multiplexers and uh, analog switches and all that kind of stuff. And there you have it uh, back to the digital world. See a lot of op amps and analog multiplexers. That will be op amps and that one will be an analog multiplexer, right? I don't see any analog to digital converters or anything like that. So I think this one measures pulses and timing and then trigger points. And there's nothing wrong with that. This is a good way to do stuff. And the crystal up here is, oh, really? 19.2. So that will be some dividers and clock distribution because this CPU is not running that fast, far from it. I don't see any number here with the, well, this is probably the software version or something like that. Uh -huh, a 32 kilobit EEPROM, and that will be the RAM. Maybe not. So that is what there is about, oh, a little rectifier bridge and the transformer right there. I don't really have super easy access for the mains entry connector because I really wanted to flip this around. Maybe I can take out the transformer and then flip it around. Oh yeah, by the way, I found this little sticker in it. So now we know the date. So. I'll probably add a little bit of glue here and stick it back to the circuit board or something like that. It's, I think it's nice to have this information inside. And um, what else did I find? I find this really weird. How is this and why is this looking this bad? I mean, nothing scratches this way. I mean, why? That is some weird thing. And also, this nasty, nasty scratch 
Look how deep it is. It goes all the way through the solder mask. Oh, that is not good either. And look at that. Okay, this is only a little piece of plastic. Ah, it probably fell through the holes here. So when you're isolating something and then you have flying things that they can, of course, land inside your instruments. So maybe add a little cover to your instruments. I want to um, try and clean this so you can, when you pull these down, you can see this is actually quite dirty. So if I take some alcohol and some cotton buds and then wipe them really nice fine. And also the little isolation here is a little bit worn. Can you see what happens? You can quite easily push this here and then it will short. So that is also something to look up a little bit into. This is better. And here on the top, there's a little sticky isolation that is coming loose. And it looks like the metal corners could potentially touch the metal here as well. So probably I will add a little bit of tape to make sure, maybe some glue to make this good again. So I'm doing all this nicing up and cleaning everything here. And of course I also clean the circuit board around here because it's, it's full of little debris that's falling down through all those many, many years. But look at that. Completely loose screw. This can't be good. So I will now see if I can fix that. <laughs> Tighten all those screws and maybe they should have added a thick layer of protective coating around the circuit board in this area because they will fall down little tiny pieces of debris or maybe component cuts and whatnot. And this can't be so good to have all this in the analog section. So to be able to tighten those screws, and of course they go loose, because the little springy plate moves, and uh, yeah, then you need to take out the entire circuit board. And to be able to do that, you also need to remove the transformer. And then you have these funny little loose spacers. And they also just go out and fall away. So I want to glue these into place like that so they're not getting lost and it's much easier. Everything here is easier then, right? And then we find some other little things. Um, look at those marks. So that will be solder points touching the bottom plate. And you can see it's quite hard. And I think it's some of those points right here. So by having a high pressure on solder points like that, you will have all sorts of um, low reliability. So that is not good. So I need to find those points and just cut them a little bit and re-solder them. And then I want to add a little bit of uh, glue so they're not gonna get loose again. And by gluing the screws on this side, now you can tighten them from the other side. And there's another fun thing. Look at all those screws. This one here is that one. And this is the single ground point to chassis near the sensor area. And all that is a good idea. But you need to access the nut underneath all those metal parts that we saw. I will show this later. So that is, of course, impossible to do. And that is why this nut was also completely loose. So if you happen to have one of these, and this is also driving you nuts, I can show you the nuts for those two screws. They are actually press fit into the chassis here. So there aren't any loose nuts on the back that will fall down and get you into all sorts of trouble. So what you can do is Take this and rotate it really, really careful, and then put it back in. And there you have it. Now your cable will go the right way 
back. Ha ha. So after a little bit of tightening my four screws, I added contact glue, so I hope they're gonna stay. It was actually all of them that were pretty loose. And I also glued the little standoffs here, so now it's going to be super easy because nothing's gonna fall around and uh, bother me and they're gonna sit exactly where I want them because there is a little part down there that is sticking up, so they need to be the correct location. Oh, I am in the middle of the reassembly, and this is the nut that I find a little bit difficult to access. As you can see here, it's a little bit hard to get in here in this uh, area, and it was of course also really, really loose. So what I'm saying is, if we only had a round hole here, and this is hidden inside, that would be the push release features. This way we could have accessed it with a top, like that. I mean, why didn't they see that? So now I'm done with all my reassembly, and of course it measures more or less the same. But there's a different feel here, and a much more stable connection. And it feels just much, much better. I'm really happy about this. So now we can go and measure some capacitors and whatnot. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you had a little bit of fun. Oh yeah, did you see that one? <laughs> of course it's supposed to be like that. <laughs>